grant test number 2 in that uh, botany so here are the 40 questions which are expected in the mset botany so let us come to the questions question number 1 study the following list and identify the incorrect combinations here are the three columns have been given column 1 2 and 3 so column number 1 a house fly family musky day order insecta b wheat family poiesi class spermatophyta c datura family solanaceae order polymoniales d mango genus domestica order sapindales okay options 1 a and b 2 b c and d 3 b and d and 4 a and c okay here uh, the three columns have been given in that uh, the right combinations have to be identified incorrect combinations have to be identified so in the first one a it is given as housefly so we know that housefly uh, scientific name is musca domestica and it belongs to the family called as muscidae so whatever that is given is correct there then it belongs to the order in the third column it is given as an order the order is insecta so all the three combinations that are given are correct related to a right then b the plant that is given here it is wheat and uh, the family to which it belongs to is poiesi the same have been given here also poiesi family and uh, they had given the class actually it belongs to the class called as dicomonocotyledone but here it is given as spermatophyta so this spermatophyta that you have been given is incorrect this is incorrect this part so this combination is incorrect so, then the c datura datura is a plant which belongs to dicots and uh, the family to which it belongs is solanaceae so that is given correct here then it belongs to the order polymoniales so this combination all the three that have been given are correct then coming to d that is a mango mango is a plant which belongs to dicotyledons and here the genus of this mango is mangifera but here it is given as domestica domestica is nowhere related to this one so this option is incorrect then of course if you see the order sapindales of course that sapindales order is correct but here one of these three columns is incorrect so b and d are the incorrect combinations from the given list so question number one the correct answer is three Question number two, study the following statements and identify the correct ones. One, in bryophytes, multicellular, jacketed and stalked sex organs are present on diploid dominant phase. Two, in pteridophytes, homosporous plants are Selaginella and Salvinia. Three, Jingo is considered as living fossil which belong to angiosperms. Four, all gymnosperms are heterosporous. So from this, from the given four statements, we have to identify which of the statement is correct. So let us come to the first statement that have been given. So this is a statement related to bryophyta group of plants. As we know that bryophytes are the amphibians of the plant kingdom and they have uh, the sex organs called as antheridia and archegonia. And of course, uh, uh, antheridia is a uh, male sex organ which is club shaped. Whereas archegony is a female sex organ which is having flask shape and those are multicellular the sex organs are made up of many cells so multicellular that is given is correct multicellular in their nature and they are covered with a protective layer that is called as jacket so we call it as a jacketed so that is also correct and the sex organs will have the stalk also the base of them there is a stalk like structure is present and uh, these are present on the uh, do, these are present on the dominant phase that uh, dominant phase is called as a gametophyte here the dominant phase is called as gametophyte so here this uh, dominant phase which is a gametophyte it is haploid in condition it should be it is haploid in condition but here in the question in the first uh, statement that is given as a diploid dominant phase so diploid that is given is an incorrect one so from the given statement they had given it as a diploid which is incorrect this part is incorrect okay so this statement is incorrect one 
The second one is uh, related to pteridophytes. Pteridophytes are called a uh, called as a uh, uh, vascular cryptograms, and in these plants, there there is a two there are two conditions: homosporous conditions there and heterosporous conditions present. Homosporous means all the spores produced in the sporangium are of same type, and uh, heterosporic condition means uh, in inside one sporangium more than one type of spores are produced. Some of them are small, called as microspores, and some of them are large, called as microspores. So here uh, they had given the two examples related to Pteridophyta. Those are uh, Selaginella and uh, Salvinia plant. Actually, here uh, the in the statement is given as uh, these plants are homosporous in their nature, but actually these are heterosporous in their nature. So as they are heterosporous, related to the statement that is incorrect. Then third one is related to the a plant called ginkgo. Ginkgo is called as a living fossil. So living fossil uh, is a one which is belonging to gymnosperms actually, but they had given it as a angiosperms. So this angiosperms is incorrect. So this statement is also wrong. Then fourth one, all gymnosperms are heterosporous, and of course here. Uh, Heterosporous means uh, definitely they are producing two types of spores. One is microspores and other is macrospores. So this statement is exactly correct. Heterosporous in their nature. All gymnosperms are heterosporous in nature. This statement is correct. So question number two, the correct answer is a four. Question number three, which of the following plants are rich in hydrocarbons? And source of biodiesel: A. Pongamia, B. Digitalis, C. Cinchona, D. Jatropha. Options: One A and D, Two B and D, Three A B and D, Four C and D. So here, this is a question related to the first unit. In that, uh, the economic value of various types of plants have been discussed in that lesson. So here, it is related to the plant which is uh, the Producing biodiesel, that is a petro plant. This nature is called as a petro plant. We call it as. So here, uh, the first plant that is Pongamia. Pongamia is otherwise called as a deris plant. It belongs to uh, Fabaceae family, and this have one special feature that uh, it it is a one which is uh, producing this uh, biodiesel. So this is correct. Then the second plant that is given is a Digitalis. Digitalis is an uh, medicinal plant. It's an it is having medicinal value, but it is not an uh, plant which is yielding biodiesel. So that is incorrect. Then uh, third one is a uh, cinchona. Cinchona is also an uh, medicinal plant, but not an plant yielding biodiesel. So that is also incorrect. Then the fourth plant that is given is a uh, jatropha. Jatropha is a plant which belongs to Euphorbiaceae family, right? And it is the one. Uh, yielding the diesel, so it is a petro plant and uh, it is having hydrocarbons and uh, it is an bio diesel plant. So from the given options, we can say that uh, A and D are the correct options. So question number three, the correct answer is one. Question number four, which of the following is not the material present in the cell wall of Rhodophyci members? Options. One cellulose, two polysulfate esters, three pectin, and four fluoridian starch. Okay, here uh, this is a question related to the plant kingdom, Rhodophyci members. Rhodophyci members. That is red algae, or red alga, and here uh, these are having the cell wall, and this cell wall is. Uh, Made up of a chemical called as one cellulose is present, right? And they also contains polysulfate esters. Polysulfate esters are also present. Along with this polysulfate ester, the cell cell wall also contains pectin in it. Pectin in it. But the fourth option that is given here, fluoridian starch is present in uh, Rhodophyci members, but it is an uh, reserve food material. But it is not the part of cell wall. So this statement is this one is uh, the wrong one related to the 
composition of cell wall in the rhodo phycy members so question number 4 the correct answer is a uh, 4 question number 5 study the following list and identify the correct match list 1 a euphorbia b ficus c hamelia d lucas list 2 1 highly reduced unisexual flowers inside cup shaped peduncle 2 unisexual flowers inside cup shaped involucre of bracts 3 unisexual sterile female flowers 4 monocacial cyme 5 monocacial and dicacial cymes options 1 a2 b3 c4 and d5 2 a3 b4 c2 and d5 3 a1 b3 c4 and d2 4 a2 b3 c5 and d4 so here it is a uh, question related to the inflorescence part okay here uh, in the list a in the list one they had they had given four plants so the first plant is a euphorbia plant we know that this euphorbia plant will have uh, the inflorescence called as euphorbia and poinsettia these two plants have the inflorescence uh, called as cyathium inflorescence cyathium is the one which appears to be single flower like inflorescence and in this uh, cyathium inflorescence uh, unisexual flowers are present that is a uh, one female flower is present and uh, many male flowers are present and these are present inside a deep cup shaped structure and that deep cup cup shaped structure is made up of inval euchre of bract so that uh, many unisexual flowers are present which are inside the uh, deep cup shaped inval euchre of bract so euphorbia is related to option number 2 here option number 2 then the second plant uh, that is uh, ficus or we can say fig fig, uh, fig plant in this one uh, the type of inflorescence that is present is called as hypanthodium inflorescence hypanthodium is the one which contains uh, unisexual flowers here three types of flowers are present they have the three types of flowers so and all these three types are unisexual only those are uh, one is male flowers are present second one is a uh, fertile female flowers are present and also sterile female flowers are present and generally these sterile female flowers are called as gall flowers are called as gall flowers and where does these flowers are present these are present inside the ped uh, deep cup shaped peduncle the fleshy receptacle or peduncle will be there inside that these uh, flowers are present so in the given options let us find out which of the characters are uh, uh, more suitable or uh, related to ficus plant so in that one we can say that uh, unisexual sterile female flowers are present right sterile female which are unisexual in nature so the option that is uh, related to this one is three then coming to the third one that is a hamelia plant hamelia is a plant which is showing monocacial cyme it's a monocacial cyme so that uh, monocacial cyme means uh, every time one branch will be formed and after uh, the branch is ending with a flower from the base of the flower one more branch will start and that also ends with the flower further one more branch so like every time one branch is forming and uh, at the tip of each branch one flower will be formed so that type of character is called as monocacial cyme that is present in uh, hamelia that is a uh, four option number four then coming to the next plan that is uh, lucas Lucas is also a special type of inflorescence as like a cyathium and a hypanthodium. Right here, uh, this is uh, this type of inflorescence is called as verticellaster. What is the speciality of this verticellaster? Verticellaster is the one which shows uh, two types of uh, characters. One is uh, presence of first dicacial cymes and latter it is continued by formation of monocacial cymes and uh, because of this dicacial and monocacial cymes this uh, they form a false oral around the node this type of uh, false oral formation is called as verticellaster this type of inflorescence can be seen in lamiaceae family members 
or labiate family members so from the given options we can say that both the characters are present that have been given in 5 so a is 2 b is 3 c is 4 and d is 5 so question number 5 the correct answer is 1 Question number six: Assertion. Porins are proteins that form huge pores in the outer membrane of the plastids, mitochondria, and some bacteria. Reason: Xylem is associated with the translocation of mainly water, mineral salts, some organic nitrogen, and hormones. Options one: Both A and R are true, and R is the correct explanation of A. Two. Both A and R are true, but R is not the correct explanation of A. Three, A is true, but R is false. Four, A is false, but R is true. Okay, here in the assertion statement, it is related to the porins. So, what are these porins? Porins are nothing but uh, the protein structures which are present in the plasma membrane, and particularly they are present in the outer membrane of uh, one is uh, plastids, mitochondria, and some bacteria. and what is the function of these porins porins are concerned with the transportation of the substances from one side to the other side so these are present only they are they are present in the outer membrane of uh, plastids because the plastids have two membranes and also mitochondria have the two membranes outer membrane smooth and inner membrane showing the foldings so only that outer membrane is exhibiting the presence of porins and also they are present in some bacteria so regarding the porins the statement that is given in assertion is correct then reason so reason is related to the xylem tissue it is related to xylem tissue and we know that xylem is a main water conducting tissue in the plants which will conduct the sap uh, that sap is nothing but water along with the minerals from uh, base to the, we can say from uh, uh, inner side to uh, from uh, lower side to upper side that is what we call it as a ascending that means upward movement so this is a main function related to the xylem tissue so here it is not only concerned with the translocation of water it also transport the dissolved minerals which are present in the water and also some uh, organic or we can say uh, nitrogen part organic nitrogen is also been translocated through this xylem tissue and apart from that one some hormones are also been transported so whatever the statement that is given in reason is also correct but this is related to the porins this is related to the xylem so nowhere there is an explanatory part related to assertion and the reason so both a and r are correct but r is not the correct explanation of a so question number 6 the correct answer is 2 question number 7 arrange the following in ascending order based on their number a essential mineral elements b macro mineral elements c framework elements d elements present in a plant options 1 d a b c 2 b a d c 3 c b a d 4 c d a b okay here it is a question related to mineral nutrition and as we know that uh, minerals are very important or they are having a vital role in the growth and development of the plants and they are not only concerned with uh, one or the other function they are also useful for activation of the enzymes likewise many important roles are they related to the uh, minerals and uh, related to the elements from where does these elements are coming into the plant body most of them are absorbed by the plants from the soil and uh, some of them are uh, been uh, taken in the form of uh, molecules right okay based on that one a plant if we take any plant one plant will have at least about uh, 30 to 40 types of uh, elements in it one plant will have about 30 to 40 elements in it out of this 30 to 40 which are present in one plant and one more thing that all the plants uh, may not have the same type of elements but some way, some plants will have some type of elements some will have some other type of elements at the same point of time there are many elements which are common in all the plants right so in this one uh, based on the criteria of essentiality that was proposed by arnon so uh, uh, based on that one there are some uh, elements we call them as essential elements 
then what are these essential elements the elements which are required for vegetative growth or the reproductive growth of the plant or for both type of growths of the plant otherwise that element should have direct role in the metabolic functions of the plant or that element the function of that element is a specific that means it should not be replaced by any other type of element if these three criteria are they related with any element we consider that element as a essential element and in this also some of them are useful in large large quantity those are called as macro elements and some of them are useful in lesser quantity called as a micro elements like uh, there are nine macro elements are there those are carbon hydrogen oxygen magnesium calcium sulfur potassium phosphorus and uh, nitrogen right nine are there total nine and micro elements are uh, seven uh, micro elements are eight so recently nickel have been added to this one nickel have been added apart from that one iron zinc copper chlorine manganese molybdenum and boron so a total of seven were there now the one more had been added that is nickel so a total of eight micro elements are there and from this macro elements or uh, macro elements these six are considered as a mineral elements what are the, what do you mean by this mineral elements mineral elements means which are taken from the soil in the form of ions so we call them as mineral elements then what about this carbon hydrogen oxygen these are not taken from the soil in the form of minerals they are taken in the form of molecules like uh, carbon in the form of carbon dioxide and uh, hydrogen and oxygen in the form of water molecule so they are taken in the form of molecules so these are not called as mineral elements so we can call them as non mineral macro elements non mineral macro elements these are called as mineral macro elements right and one more special feature is they related to carbon hydrogen oxygen that is uh, they are the main constituent parts of uh, the framework of the plant body so we can all, we can also call this c h and o as framework elements these are called as framework elements also then let us come to micro elements all the total eight which are there no all of them are uh, derived from the soil in the form of minerals by the plant so we can call them as a micro mineral elements all of them are in the form of minerals so now let us count the total number of uh, mineral elements so 8 plus 16 so 8 plus 6 a total of uh, 14 mineral elements are present out of this 14 6 are called as a uh, mineral macro elements and 8 uh, are mineral micro elements mineral micro elements now let us complete the question that have been given here first one a essential mineral elements so essential mineral elements are how many 14 essential mineral elements are 14 so whatever the option that is given a is 14 right second one is macro mineral elements how many are the macro mineral that is 16 6 b is equals to 6 then framework elements carbon hydrogen and oxygen so they are three elements present in a plant near about 30 to 40 so now we we got the values the numbers related to the options that have been given now we have to arrange them in the ascending order ascending order means the Uh, least to highest the least one is c first it should be c then b then a and last comes the d so the correct uh, ascending order related to the number is c b a and d so question number 7 the correct answer is 3 question number 8 excess of manganese induce deficiencies of which group of elements options 1 iron zinc and calcium 2 iron magnesium and calcium 3 copper zinc and iron 
फोर क्लोरिन आयरन एंड जिंक ओके इट इज ऑल्सो रिलेटेड टू द मिनरल न्यूट्रिशन पार्ट सो हियर दिस क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू टॉक्सिसिटी ऑफ द माइक्रो एलिमेंट्स टॉक्सिसिटी ऑफ माइक्रो एलिमेंट्स सो वॉट यू मीन बाई दिस टॉक्सिसिटी वी नो अबाउट डेफिशियंसी ऑफ एन एलिमेंट Deficiency means uh, some elements are uh, not uh, up to their mark. That means uh, the required quantity is uh, the wanting quantity is not there in the plants. So that is a deficiency symptom. Or, or we can say that if any element is uh, less than its required quantity, we call it as a deficiency symptom or deficiency of that particular element. But what is this toxicity? What happens is there are some elements which which are uh, excess than their requirement. so this excess uh, element what it will do it will show a negative effect of, of the others that is it they will uh, uh, make the function of other elements to inhibited so they will inhibit the function of or they will not allow the other elements to perform their own function that ability of an uh, element which is in excess quantity inhibiting the function of other elements is called as a toxicity so here it is related to the toxicity of uh, and uh, element called as manganese actually if uh, manganese is excess in a plant if it is excess what it will do it will inhibit the activity of other elements so what are the other elements whose activity is inhibited by manganese those are uh, one iron that is uh, represented as fe and uh, next one is magnesium that is uh, mg and uh, calcium that is ca so uh, that is that is uh, actually in the plant what we observe the deficiency of uh, iron magnesium and calcium is observed but it is not really the deficiency but it is a toxicity of the manganese because of the tax toxicity of the manganese or excess amount of manganese uh, the function of these three elements is inhibited in the plant but actually their amount is not less their amount is to the up to up to the point or required quantity but their activity is inhibited because of excess manganese in the plant this is called as a toxicity so related to this one question number 8 the excess of manganese induce the deficiencies of which group of elements means iron magnesium and calcium so question number 8 the correct answer is 2 Question number nine: Study the following statements and identify the correct statement. One: Leg hemoglobin present in root nodule of Fabaceae plants fix nitrogen. Two: Pseudomonas and Thiobacillus are nitrifying bacteria. Three: Malonate is a competitive inhibitor which closely resembles succinic dehydrogenase. Four. substrate concentration required to cause half the maximum reaction rate is termed as michaelis menten constant okay from the given four statements we have to identify which one is a correct statement okay so let us come to the first one so it is related to the uh, what do you call the, the root nodules or nodular roots and the fixation we know that uh, leg hemoglobin is present it's an uh, pigment which is present in the nodules of the fabaceae family roots what does this le uh, leg hemoglobin do it is acting as an uh, oxygen scavenger oxygen scavenger so what do you mean by oxygen scavenger means actually the bacterium which is present in that root nodule is a rhizobium bacterium which is an aerobic bacterium right so rhizobium which is which is, which is present inside the uh, nodule is an aerobic bacterium that means uh, it can it requires oxygen okay but inside this rhizobium bacterium nitrogenase enzyme is present or we can call it as dinitrogenase enzyme this dinitrogenase enzyme will become inactivated in presence of excess oxygen if oxygen is not present rhizobium cannot perform respiration so there is a small problem related to excess or uh, absence of oxygen so what does this leg hemoglobin do it will uh, maintain the oxygen concentration in such a manner that it is sufficient for aerobic respiration rhizobium and at the same time that concentration of oxygen should not cause any harm to the activity of nitrogenase enzyme so it is acting as a 
oxygen scavenger but in the statement it is given as leg hemoglobin present in the root nodules of fabaceae will fix nitrogen it is not the one which is fixing nitrogen rhizobium is a bacterium which is fixing nitrogen so whatever the statement that is given is incorrect statement in okay then let us come to the second one second one is a pseudomonas and a thiobacillus so pseudomonas bacteria pseudomonas denitrificans and the same way thiobacillus denitrificans these two are the bacterium which are causing denitrification process denitrification process what is this denitrification actually in the nitrogen cycle we know that uh, nitrogen fixation nitrogen assimilation uh, nitrification uh, what do you call uh, ammonification and uh, nitri nitrification like all the steps are there the final step is a denitrification denitrification means uh, once again the nitrates which are formed will be converted into molecular nitrogen nitrates which are formed are converted into molecular nitrogen this process is the last step of nitrogen cycle where uh, denitrifying bacteria are used so the examples of denitrifying bacteria are pseudomonas and the thiobacillus but in the option it is given as pseudomonas and thiobacillus are the nitrifying bacteria actually which one are the nitrifying bacteria nitrifying bacteria are nitrosomonas and uh, nitrococcus or we can say uh, nitrococcus and also nitrobacter so these are the nitrifying bacteria which will convert ammonia into nitrates right so here uh, pseudomonas are the denitrifying bacteria and the thiobas is also denitrifying bacteria so that means uh, the statement that is given is a incorrect statement now let us come to the third one malonot is a competitive inhibitor which closely resembles succinic dehydrogenase so here it is related to competitive inhibitor this is a part uh, related to the enzymes in enzymes three types of inhibitors are there which will inhibit the activity of enzymes first one in this is a competitive inhibitor actually there is an uh, inhibitor any compound which is uh, similar to the structure of substrate right it is similar to the structure of substrate and before the substrate go and bind to the active site of enzyme this inhibitor will go and attack the active site of the enzyme so when it is going and attacking the active site of enzyme by the time that actual substrate comes it can't uh, occupy the because now this uh, active site is not vacant so that's the reason why the activity of the enzyme is inhibited so here uh, the inhibitor is uh, structurally similar to the substrate molecule but it is not similar to the enzyme molecule right so here it is a, a, question, a example is given malonate is an competitive inhibitor for succinic acid or succinate succinate is a substrate molecule and uh, this uh, malonate is an competitive inhibitor the structure of malonate is uh, similar to the substrate called as succinate but not to the succinic dehydrogenase enzyme so that statement which is given here it is also incorrect then the fourth statement so it is related to the michaeli michaelis and uh, menten constant michaelis menten constant so that is uh, km so it is a, a definition that have been given that is substrate concentration required to cause half maximum reaction rate is termed as michaelis menten constant right here uh, what is the maximum uh, maximum uh, reaction rate that is taking place so half of the maximum reaction rate for that uh, whatever the uh, concentration of substrate that is required is called as a km so that statement is correct so from the given four statements we can say that one two three are, are the incorrect statements whereas the fourth statement is a correct one so question number 9 the correct answer is 4 question number 10 the correct sequence of electrons transport from excited p700 to nadp is 
ऑप्शन वन पी सेवन हंड्रेड एक्साइटेड टू ए नॉट टू ए वन टू एफ ए बाई एफ बी टू एफ एक्स टू एफ डी टू एफ एन आर सेकेंड ऑप्शन पी सेवन हंड्रेड एक्साइटेड टू ए नॉट टू ए वन टू एफ एक्स टू एफ ए बाई एफ बी टू एफ एन आर टू एफ डी देन थर्ड ऑप्शन पी सेवन हंड्रेड एक्साइटेड ए नॉट ए वन एफ एक्स एफ ए बाई एफ एफ ए बाई एफ बी एफ डी टू एफ एन आर देन फोर्थ ऑप्शन पी सेवन हंड्रेड एक्साइटेड ए वन ए नॉट एफ एक्स एफ ए बाई एफ बी एफ डी टू एफ एन आर सो हियर एज वी नो दैट द नॉन साइक्लिक एलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट इज प्रेजेंट इन फोटो सिंथेटिक प्रोसेस एक्चुअल टू आर देर वन इज साइक्लिक एंड अदर इज अ नॉन साइक्लिक इन द नॉन साइक्लिक इलेक्ट्रॉन ट्रांसपोर्ट द द इलेक्ट्रॉन्स विच हैव बीन लॉस्ट फ्रॉम रिएक्शन सेंटर ऑफ पी एस टू दैट इज पी सिक्सटी एटी दे रीच फाइनली टू द एन ए डी पी मॉलिक्यूल राइट एंड इन दिस प्रोसेस द टू फोटो सिस्टम्स आर ऑपरेटेड वन इज पी एस टू देन पी एस वन सो हियर इन द ऑप्शन दैट है Uh, give the correct sequence of electrons starting from p seven hundred. They are not asking about uh, from p six eighty. It is from p seven hundred. And as we know that whenever a p seven hundred that is what uh, the light harvesting complex of one will uh, take the light at uh, more than or we can say more than six eighty nanometers or around seven hundred nanometers. What happens? This uh, p seven hundred which is there that will get excited. so it will be converted into p700 with star mark that is shown in the form of an excited state excited state and uh, when it is excited it will lose one electron right that electron is uh, going to an uh, unknown compound that is called as a not from there the electron will be moving to one more compound called as a1 from there uh, it is moving to fx from fx2 it is moving to fa by fb compound from the F, fa by fb compound it is going to ferridoxin and from ferridoxin to fnr and finally they are moving to nadp so that this nadp is converted into nadph plus h plus okay here uh, nadp not only taking the protons but also it will take electrons so it is reduced into nadp h plus h plus molecule so this is a correct sequence of uh, electrons which are moving from excited p700 to nadp molecule so p700 in the ground in the ground level and finally it is a nadp which is a acceptor so p700 excited to a not a1 fx fa by fb fd fnr finally to the nadp to form into nadp h plus h plus So question number 10 the correct answer is 3 Question number 11 arrange the following enzymes of Krebs cycle in correct sequence 1 fumarase 2 succinic thiokinase 3 malic dehydrogenase 4 succinic dehydrogenase options 1 2 4 1 and 3 2 4 2 1 and 3 third option 2 4 3 and 1 fourth option 4 2 3 and 1 so here um, this is a question related to the enzymes of krebs cycle we know that a krebs cycle is a process which is taking place in the mitochondrial matrix during aerobic respiration and uh, the substrate uh, which is entering into krebs cycle is a acetyl coenzyme a which is an two carbon compound that will react with oxaloacetic acid which is an four carbon compound to form into the first compound of krebs cycle called as a that is first one let us say acetyl coenzyme a plus oxaloacetic acid oaa forming into a six carbon molecule called as citric acid citric acid is a six carbon molecule and it is having three carboxyl groups in it that's why we call this cycle as a tri carboxylic acid cycle also right then this uh, 
citric acid that is formed that will move in uh, various uh, uh, we can say that will be converted into different intermediate compounds and finally it will be regenerating oxaloacetic acid and here we have to and we know that uh, each and every step in any living process is is an catalyzed one catalyzed means which is activated or catalyzed by the enzymes right here we have to uh, note down this uh, enzymes here that have been given and we have to arrange them in the correct order where they are coming so in this process we know that uh, citric acid is converted into aconitic acid from there to isocitric acid and uh, from isocitric acid to alpha ketoglutaric acid from there onwards we have to uh, see this whatever the enzymes which are which have been given there so we know that uh, from oxaloacetic acid succinyl coenzyme a is formed this succinyl coenzyme is converted into succinic acid and succinic acid is converted into fumaric acid and fumaric acid is converted into malic acid and malic acid is converted into oxaloacetic acid oxaloacetic acid so here uh, during the conversion of we have to see the various enzymes which are taking part in these steps malic acid when it is converted into oxaloacetic acid the enzyme which is required is uh, malic dehydrogenase enzyme malic dehydrogenase enzyme then when fumaric acid is converted into malic acid the enzyme is fumarase enzyme fumarase enzyme then the uh, enzyme which is required during the conversion of succinic acid into fumaric acid is a succinic dehydrogenase enzyme succinic dehydrogenase enzyme then coming to when succinic coenzyme is converted into succinic acid there the enzyme that is required is called as succinic thiokinase enzyme succinic thiokinase enzyme so if we take the step wise the which one is coming first succinic thiokinase is coming first then succinic acid then fumarase and finally malic dehydrogenase enzyme so here uh, succinic thiokinase is uh, uh, number 2 there so first one should be 2 then coming to succinic dehydrogenase which is an fourth which is given in fourth one whereas the next one is a fumarase which is given in 1 and malic uh, dehydrogenase which is given in 3 so the correct sequence of enzymes which are coming in the krebs cycle are first one uh, that is succinic thiokinase 2 succinic dehydrogenase 4 fumarase 1 and malic dehydrogenase 3 so the correct sequence is 2 4 1 and 3 question number 11 the correct answer is 1 question number 12 which kind of growth occurs during the embryo development from a zygotic cell one geometric growth two arithmetic growth three primary growth four both arithmetic and geometric growth okay here this is a question related to the plant growth and development that is plant growth uh, hormones later lesson but here we know that uh, first we have to know about what is arithmetic growth and what is geometric growth so let us see first one arithmetic growth So what do you mean by this arithmetic growth? When a uh, one cell is present, right? This is a meristematic cell. This will divide to form two cells. Divide to form two cells, and out of these two cells, only one cell will divide further, but one cell does not divide. So when in the next step, what happens? It is converted into only three cells, because it is not dividing. It is remained as like, but it is dividing to form two cells, right? and uh, these two cells does not divide now so they remain as like and this one will divide to to form into two cells so uh, that means what is happening generation wise generation what is happening only one cell is added to the group of cells that type of growth is called as a arithmetic growth then geometric growth geometric growth is a one where uh, one meristematic cell is there it will divide to form two cells it is up to here this is same but those two cells which have been formed both of them will divide and this will form two cells and this cell will form two more cells 
but in the third generation of uh, second gen third generation what is happening second or third the number every every generation only one cell is added but here every generation the number is becoming double each of the cell will divide right and uh, each of it will form into two cells so this one is forming into two cells this one is forming into two cells and this one is also forming into two cells and uh, last one is also forming into two cells so generation by generation wise what is happening the number of cells are becoming double this type of growth is called as a geometric growth and here now the question is related to zygote when it is converted into embryo which type of growth is exhibited by it so it will exhibit both uh, arithmetic growth and also the geometric growth so question number 12 the correct answer is uh, 4 Question number 13. Study the following tables. 1. A. Martinez Beiserink. 2. Robert Koch. 3. Leeuwenhoek. D. Griffith. List 2. 1. Transformation. 2. Transduction. 3. Animalcules. 4. Germ theory of diseases. 5. Contagious living fluid. The correct combination is first option A5, B4, C3 and D2. Second option a4, B5, C3 and D2. Third option, A5, B4, C3 and D1. Fourth option, A4, B3, C2 and D1. Okay. Here, this is a question related to the scientists and their work. Okay. So, in the list one, it is given as a Martinus Beiserink. So, Martinus Beiserink is a scientist who is concerned with the viruses actually uh, Ivanovsky is a scientist who first uh, identified that uh, that something is happening uh, which are not uh, that is some pathogenic nature is present uh, for some uh, special type of uh, organisms are there that was a discovery but Beisering he said that whatever the pathogenic nature is there that is because of some living fluid which is toxic in nature so he said that contagious vivum fluidum that means some contagious uh, living fluid is there which is responsible for the diseases. So that uh, A is 5. Contagious vivum fluidum or contagious living fluid is present. Then coming to the second one that is B. So the scientist who that is given it here it is a Robert Koch. Robert Koch is a scientist who is uh, related to the study of bacteria. And uh, he is a speciality, his specialty or we can say that uh, he is a person who had uh, said that some relation is there with the germs and uh, the diseases. So that is called as a germ theory of diseases that was given by the scientist. Germ theory of diseases. Then uh, next one is Leeuwenhoek. Leeuwenhoek is one of the most important or famous uh, scientists related to plant sciences. And he is the first person who first identified the presence of bacteria by using a special type of a microscope and here whatever the uh, uh, cell which, ha which have been identified or the living condition cell which have been identified is an uh, uh, which is showing a dazzling movement. So when he was observing his own scrappings in a under the microscope he found that something is moving rapidly or very fastly and he said that something is moving is it is not a non-living but is a living thing. And as it is showing the dazzling movement, based on that one, he called them as a animalcules. Of course, later that uh, animalcules, whatever Leeuwenhacker said, they were named as bacteria by Ehrenberg. So that is a, a different story. But here, uh, related to Leeuwenhack, which one is the correct option? Is uh, animalcules. That is three. The name animalcules was given to bacteria by Leeuwenhack, and also he is a creditor for discovery of bacteria. Then coming to the scientist Griffith, Frederick uh, Griffith scientist. So he is a scientist related to the experiment on uh, the genetic transfer in uh, genetic tra genetic material transfer in bacteria. So he is a person who do who does the experiment called as transformation, transformation of uh, the genetic material from one bacteria to the other bacteria. So likewise, uh, a Bajerink is 5, B, Robert Koch is 4, C, Leeuwenhoek is 3 and D, Griffith is 1. So, the correct combinations are 5, 4, 3 and 1. 
So question number 13, the correct answer is 3. Question number 14, identify the incorrect combinations. So column number 1, 1, spirochete. Column number 2, slender, long and cork screw shaped. Option 2, SARS in a, a linear chain of cells in a single row. 3, amphitrichus, a single flagellum at a, each end of the cell. 4, peritrichus, flagella distributed over the entire cell. Okay, here uh, first one in the column number 1 that is given as spirochete. Spirochete is a bacteria which is having a slender, long and a cork screw shaped structure. Long, slender and cork screw shaped structure. So related to this one, the character that is given is correct. Then second one, sarsine. It is also related to the shape of the bacteria. We know that uh, 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 cocos bacteria are there. That is a uh, round shaped bacteria are there. And if eight uh, round shaped bacteria which are arranged in a cube shape, arranged in a cube shape like this. One, two, three and four. And remaining four will be like this. One, two, three and four. So all these eight are arranged in the cube shape cube shape that is called as sarsine but here it is given as a linear chain of cells in a single row so if it's a linear chain of cells like this in a single row linear chain of single row of cells so we call this as a streptococcus called as streptococcus but the combination that is given is incorrect so then third one amphitrichus so it is related to the presence of uh, the flagella on the bacteria cell right here if this is a bacteria cell and if one flagella is present on one pole and one flagella is present on other pole this is called as amphitrichus flag and amphitrichus character that means a cell which is having two flagella one at one pole and other at the other pole so this is called as amphitrichus nature then so this is correct Okay, the fourth one is peritrichus. Peritrichus is also related to the distribution of flagella on the bacteria cell. So consider this is a bacteria, right? On this bacteria, if flagella are distributed throughout its surface, like this, we call this as a peritrichus nature. Flagella distributed over the entire cell. So this is also correct related to this one. So in the given uh, combinations in the column one and two, one is correct. 3 combination is correct and 4th combination is also correct. The second combination is incorrect because sarsina is not a single chain of uh, uh, cocos bacteria but it is an uh, 8 which are in a cube shape. So question number 14 the correct answer is 2. Question number 15 the cotton bowl worms are controlled by the proteins encoded by the genes. Options 1. Cry 1 AC and Cry 1 AB. 2. Cry 1 AB and Cry 2 AB. 3. Cry 1 AB, Cry 2 AB and Cry 1 AC. Then 4. Cry 1 AC and Cry 2 AB. Okay. Here uh, we know that uh, there in uh, what you call the biopesis are there that is bacillus thuringiensis. In that, uh, the protoxins are uh, converted, the protoxins are the inactive toxins and when these protoxins enters into the midgut of uh, this uh, caterpillar, caterpillar larva of a butterfly, what happens uh, that uh, because of the alkaline pH, that uh, protoxins will get activated and converted into poisonous material or called as a toxic material. Now it will act on the uh, midgut of that um, caterpillar and it will leading leads to the swelling and uh, killing of that insect and those uh, genes which are responsible for that are actually that is the external application but in bt cotton and bt uh, brinjal what happened the genes which are responsible for the production of that toxic material is introduced into the plant so we call such plants as a bt cotton plants and uh, bt brinjal plants in these two plants there is no need of application of this Bt spores from outside because internally they have that genes in them and those genes are uh, represented with uh, cry. 
represented with cry actually three types of uh, cry genes are present those are called as uh, cry 1ab cry 2ab and uh, cry 1ac so these are the three uh, genes uh, which are responsible for that uh, bio pesticide nature right here uh, there are two examples are there one is a uh, cotton boll worms and uh, corn borer corn borer so here uh, the cotton boll worms are controlled by the proteins which are encoded by cry but what are which of them are correct means in this one cry 1 ac and cry 2 ab are the correct one related to the uh, proteins which are encoded by the genes whereas uh, cry 1 ab is the one related to the corn borers that means corn borers are controlled by the proteins encoded by cry 1 ab whereas uh, 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 the co the cotton boll worms are controlled by the controlled by the proteins encoded by the genes cry 2 ab and cry 1 ac so here the question is related to cotton boll worms so that uh, cry 2 ab and cry 1 ac are the correct ones so question number 15 the correct answer is 4 Question number sixteen: Assertion: A nematode, Melagdan incognitia, infects the roots of tobacco plants and causes a great reduction in yield. Reason: RNAi takes place in all eukaryotic organisms as a method of cellular defense. Options: One, both A and R are true, and R is a correct explanation of A. Two. Both A and R are true, but R is not the correct explanation of A. Three, A is true, but R is false. Four, A is false, but R is true. Okay, here uh, this is a uh, one which is related to RNA interference. Okay, there is a nematode called as a Melogdon incognitia. Melogdon incognitia. So here uh, it is an uh, nematode plant which is uh, infecting the transgenic toba uh, tobacco plant so what is happening when it is attacking the tobacco plant we know that uh, this tobacco plant is infected by this nematode and at that point of time what is happening the rna because of this one it is uh, there is a lot of uh, reduction in the uh, yield of that uh, tobacco plant so that statement which is given here it is correct that is a nematode called as incognitia Uh, sorry a nematode called as melogdin incognitia infects the roots of tobacco that of course it is correct and uh, not only infecting the roots of uh, tobacco plant it is uh, uh, causing a great loss or reduction in the yield of tobacco so that statement is correct then b here uh, how can we control this uh, process means it is done by rnai that is rna interference in this process what happens uh, here uh, they will introduce an uh, uh, single stranded rna into that uh, one whereas uh, that single stranded rna will go and uh, bind to the mrna which is present in that organism at that point of time what is happening that single stranded mrna should translate should uh, participate in the translation process so that they they produce some proteins which are causing that disease in that plant but before that process what is happening the single stranded dna which is single stranded rna which is introduced into that organism will go and bind to the mrna molecule so when because of the complementary nature so this what is happening the rna is converted into double stranded rna molecule now this double stranded rna cannot participate in the translation process that's the reason why we are interfering the the translation of the rna molecule and this is a type of cellular defense it's a type of cellular defense which is uh, presents in the present in the plant okay so reason statement is also correct in the assertion they are saying that some disease is caused or some reduction is done in the tobacco plant because of that melogdin incognitia but here it is talking about how the cellular defense is there in eukaryotic organisms so both a and r are correct but r is not the correct explanation of a so question number 16 the correct answer is uh, 
टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवनटीन फंगस एसोसिएटेड विथ रूट ऑफ हाइयर प्लांट्स डज नॉट एग्जिबिट ऑप्शन वन फैसिलिटेट एब्जॉर्बन ऑफ फॉस्फरस बाय द प्लांट फ्रॉम द सॉइल टू ओवरऑल इंक्रीज इन प्लांट ग्रोथ एंड डेवलपमेंट थ्री नाइट्रोजन फिक्सेशन फोर टॉलरेंस टू सैलिनिटी एंड ड्रॉट ओके हियर दिस क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटेड टू द माइकोराइजा एक्चुअल बिकॉज माइकोराइजा इज नथिंग बट द माइकोराइज इज नथिंग बट द एसोसिएशन बिटवीन एंड फंगस दैट इज माइको एंड राइजा the root of higher plants and uh, this type of association is an symbiotic association where uh, both this both of them which are associated with each other are benefited by this association what does this fungus will do fungus will absorb minerals and particularly they will absorb more amount of phosphorus from the soil and provide that to the plant body so that is it is uh, showing the facilitated absorption of phosphorus from the soil to the plants so the first statement that is given here it is correct then the second one not only increasing that uh, absorption of phosphorus but also they help in the overall growth of the plant and plant so they are helping in the overall growth and development of the plant body this association right then third one so this statement is correct third one it is given as nitrogen fixation actually here it is nowhere related to the nitrogen fixation process so this is incorrect then tolerance to tolerance to salinity and drought so because of this association the plant is getting resistance or tolerance to salinity and the drought condition so this is correct so because of this mycorrhizal association the plant is getting three benefits one is a uh, facilitated absorption of phosphorus overall growth and development of the plant and also tolerance to salinity and drought so not the nitrogen fixation so question number 17 the correct answer is 3 uh, question number 18 what is the ratio between broken and unbroken hydrogen bonds when eco r1 act on dna molecule options 1 Four is to three, two. Four is to seven, three. Three is to seven, and fourth one, one is to four. Okay. It is a question related to genetic engineering or biotechnology part. That is a principles and process of biotechnology. So this is a restriction enzyme. As we know that, what is the function of a restriction enzyme? Restriction enzyme is a molecular scissors which will uh, inspect the total length of the dna molecule and uh, after inspecting they will identify some particular sequences what are those uh, particular sequences are palindromic sequences so what is a palindromic sequence palindromic sequence is a one where if you read in opposite direction in the two strands they will be having the same sequence and uh, not only they will identify the palindromic sequence and they will cut the dna in that palindromic sequence only that is a property of this uh, restriction enzymes those are acting as a molecular scissors now the question is related to eco r1 and from where does this uh, uh, restriction enzymes are derived they are derived from bacteria and based on the name of that bacteria the name of the restriction enzymes have been given here let us see here in this e means escherichia and uh, co means coli that is uh, this is a uh, restriction enzyme which is uh, derived from escherichia coli bacteria so here let us see here in this one uh, eco r1 will identify a sequence that is uh, g a a t t and c 3 prime so some sequence is there somewhere here right then the second uh, strand 3 prime and this side will be 5 prime now it is from opposite side it also show g a a t t and c so when you are reading in opposite direction of the two strands they are showing the same sequence so this is a palindromic sequence which is identified by eco r1 after inspecting the total length of dna molecule and it will cut this uh, 
DNA molecule somewhere in that uh, palindromic sequence. It will cut between G and A from 5 prime to 3 prime and uh, from here in the second strand also from pri 5 prime to 3 prime it will cut between G and A, right. So, here it is it is the question is related to when it is uh, forming this one. Before that let us see how many hydrogen bonds are there here. According to the complementary nature that we that is there in the first year part, we know that uh, wherever G is present in on one strand, the opposite strand will have C on at that place and wherever A is present on one strand, opposite strand of exactly opposite to that one, thiamine will be there. So, three hydrogen bonds are present between G and C, two hydrogen bonds are between A and T, here also two, here also two, here two and here a total of three hydrogen bonds are present and uh, one phosphodiester bond between A and G is broken and one phosphodiester bond between this A and G is broken, right? And uh, these bonds are also been broken like this, right? Now it will form a strands 5 prime G and 3 prime with the C triple bond. This is not broken, right? And uh, T, T, A, A. This is forming a protruded end and this type of cutting is called as staggered cut, staggered cut. And the second one, it is A, from here you have to see A, A, T, T, C and 3 prime. And here second strand 5 prime with G, and these hydrogen bonds are not broken, right? So this is also forming a protruded end. This type of cutting as I said it is a staggered cut and in this one, in the palindromic sequence, what is the total number of hydrogen bonds? So we have to take from here to here. That is total number of hydrogen bonds which are present are 14, right? Out of that 14, how many are broken? How many are broken? 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. That is 8 are broken and uh, how many are unbroken? So here which are left out here? This 6, so this 3 and this 3. A total of 6 are unbroken. So the ratio between broken and unbroken hydrogen bonds when ECO R1 is acting on DNA molecule, 8 is to 6. If we simplify them, we get 4 is to 3. So we can't simplify it further. So the least ratio is 4 is to 3. So question number 18, the correct answer is 1.